Okay, dude. So I figured what we would do is sit and have a conversation because, well, one, you made a trip to Saipan, which is where we're at right now. Uh, and so when we were talking about this, we were talking about trying to figure out or, or trying to find some sort of a, a pattern of, because people have started showing up here. Like what are potentially the patterns of people showing up here? We can talk about your impressions of coming here, your impressions of why you left where you're from. So we'll talk about all of that and maybe it'll resonate with a few people. I think now, especially I'm hearing a lot more people who are like, oh, where should I be going? Right. Even more so than just even a couple months ago. So something has happened, I think, globally, where people are like waking up mm. a little bit. You woke up earlier than that. So why don't you first off tell people who you are, what you do, give a little background of where you're from and everything, and then sure. we'll talk about your journey. All right. So, yeah, I am Tobias Wuck and yeah, I'm from Germany. And well, I'm basically at this point like a Bitcoin developer. So what I do is I develop um, currently a app and a card for payments so you can use like bitcoin directly with the card which is like this new form factor and yeah i've been in germany my entire life i've you know traveled a bit here and there but never really like left home for good so and this is kind of was like okay i should go somewhere else and Saipan was that. Do you feel like you left home for good? Is that what you feel like now? Do you feel like you won't be back to Germany? What's your impression? Well, if I go back to Germany, it'll feel more like a visit where it's like, mm. okay, how, what, what are you guys up to? So I think mentally I kind of moved my home here. Like, because okay. I, f I feel like it, everything is more re relatable here despite like things being different, but they're different in like the kind that is good for me, like that I feel comfortable with. So you, uh, so we're in February now, you got here like right around Thanksgiving, right? Something like that, end of November or something like that? Yeah, uh, my passport says like mid of November, mid but of November, then there okay. was like the, the quarantine, quarantine and everything. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so let's talk about that. So when did you, so, okay, first off, so Saipan is a weird place obviously most people don't even know this place exists yeah right? <laughs> me too like you introduced it to me okay. and i was like what the fuck like okay. what is this <laughs> so so w so what made you decide we'll get into your journey because you had a crazy journey to get here that required a lot of commitment but like what made you decide that this would be a good place to be mm. as opposed to germany and when did you make that decision yeah as opposed to germany so i think like I, I've been a libertarian for quite a while and I was like, okay, where do I like spread liberty the most? Like, where is it the easiest? Where is it? Or where can I have the most impact? And over time I realized, okay, Germany is not the place. Like people actually don't want freedom there. Like they're pretty content with, you know, what they have right now. I mean, not what they have right now, I guess, but you know, that's kind of what they got. And so I was like, okay, it's gotta be somewhere else and america always stood out for me it was mm -hmm. like um it's mostly just a culture of like okay uh freedom is something very important just in it of itself like mm -hmm. without like there are many many reasons to have freedom but here it seems like like if it's against freedom then it's bad like mm -hmm. and we don't have or that at least it used to yeah it used to be well, that. here it still seems like that but anyway yeah. go ahead go ahead <laughs> Well, well, there's still like, uh, there's still like this, um, just this echo of this culture at least. Yeah. Okay. So gotcha. like if there was, a, I, I think there could be like a reemergence of that spirit mm -hmm. at some point mm -hmm. again. And in Germany that won't happen because like our spirits are <laughs> very different from that. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so I was less, uh, was like, okay, eventually will be like America something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then I came up with uh, Bcash the cart mm -hmm. company and like this new script system and there was like, okay where is like the best place to start and all again like generally the European Union would not be the place and especially Germany because people don't use credit cards as often as here um, yeah. uh, especially in the mainland and so it's like, okay and the fees are like by law much lower in the uh, European Union okay than in Germany. So it's like, 
makes no sense for me to stay here. So mm -hmm. at this point, I was like, okay, where do I go? Um, and th there were a few places, like even like Colombia, because they have mm -hmm. like really high mm -hmm. transaction fees for credit cards, but they still use them like on like surprisingly high, m high percentage stuff like that. And uh, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. which is probably like my number two, mm -hmm. but good good that I didn't go there because you know it's not much better than Germany right now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Especially with the winter, it's probably worse with the winter. The winter's pretty bad. Yeah, I've mean, been there for for a year. I went through a winter there. It's you get used to it, but I mean, it's bad. Yeah, and I mean, when I came here, I was like, okay, no, but before I came, I was like, okay, the temperature and climate would be like really bad because it'd be hot and I'd be sweaty and stuff. Oh, yeah. But it's been not that at all. Like I, I just got my first sunburn yesterday. <laughs> And before that, no sunburns. And now I'm like, where does it come from? Like, no, the weather know. here is like, it's surprisingly good. Yeah. You know, like, like by yeah. by 4 o'clock, 4 p.m., like so between, maybe it might get a little hot on a day between like 10 a.m. and like 3 p.m., but mm. after that, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, so, but why Saipan? Yeah, why Saipan? So Saipan was um, so w one of the big reasons was like that you were here. So I said, like, okay, okay, like I already followed you and like what you're doing, and you you inspired like some ideas. You you actually like had the idea of me putting the smart contract, which I just made like a very short video about. You were like, oh, put this on a card. So I already knew like because nobody else was like having that. So I said, mm -hmm. like, okay, he's ahead. He's ahead like of the curve basically. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, what I did was uh, that, that was that was one reason, and the other one was that you have to US dollar. So it's like, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes mm -hmm. sense. And then yeah, like this uh, COVID stuff. Mm -hmm. Also okay, is there like any place that's like more free regarding COVID? And you you were like saying like okay, we we don't have that this we don't have that we don't have a lockdown like stuff mm -hmm. is like open, and that like completely was exactly what what is there like the only thing we have to do is like wear masks from time to time but even that like you can feel it's just like a thing you do just to right. like it's not like they're like um, uh, let's say the number of karens that are running around and like it's policing that it's very low well and i think that here like while there may be some people who would like to be karens there isn't a like encouragement yeah there yeah. there isn't a culture where like it would be one thing if a manager of a store was like, oh, sir, can you put on a mask? So sorry. And they would do it in a very like, oh, so sorry. I'm sorry. Can yeah. you put on a mask, please? Yeah. Like, you know, uh, some manager, you know, because they've been told, oh, everybody needs to wear a mask, yeah. but we don't have COVID. But there is, I think there's very little patience for somebody who would be like a customer mm -hmm. to stop you and be like, put on a mask. Yeah. That, I don't think that would yeah. go over here. Um, I think people yeah. would look at them crazy like oh what? they would think they were the problem yeah and right? like losing face i think is very big here because mm -hmm. it's such a communal mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. so you you generally wouldn't like annoy people just mm -hmm. just so like without like a very good reason and mm -hmm. for most people like that's not a very good reason it's like okay it's the rules but you know mm -hmm. we don't really need it uh so that was that was very big and also like maybe warranted, maybe unwarranted fear of not being able to leave Germany, because mm. um, like we had history of like the Berlin Wall, like sure, it's yeah. it's not that yeah. far off, yeah. and uh, UK completely closed, yeah. like you can only go for yeah. important business and yeah. stuff. So I said, okay, yeah, Saipan it is, and and yeah. when did you make that decision? Uh, like I think around. July, June, July, July so June, between so July, June, July, and November, there's some months in there. Yeah. So like, so we were definitely talking during that time. But why don't you why don't you go through? I mean, we don't have to go into excruciating detail, yeah. although it's an excruciating trip. But like, highlights of like what the challenges were because there were still, even though Saipan internally is open. It still has the same immigration policies as the United States. Yes. So there's some issues when it comes to the EU right now and traveling from the EU to here. So that's the yeah. first thing. Then there's limited flights, obviously. 
oh yeah oh yeah right and some places you can't transit through yes. th- that are that and that has nothing to do with here or th- with germany uh and then there's the quarantine situation right so we have a we have a quarantine here in this commonwealth commonwealth of northern marianas islands that doesn't exist in the states in the mainland so so why don't you break down like how that all unfolded and then break down like your the steps of your journey because you had kind of a long one yeah yeah so what i started kind of blue-eyed or like uh, just you know going going at it well it was like um le- yeah let me just uh, book any th- any flight and just like go here so what i booked was with a flight and th- that was like months in advance mm-hmm. like something in july or august or something where i was um booking a flight from germany and then through japan but within japan there was a transit between the airports and then also i would just fly to saipan directly like from germany within a few days to saipan Mm -hmm. um yeah and then like months passed we like talked about it you actually sent me like a form for internet and i was like Mm -hmm. oh it sounds a bit you know (laughs) like premature but yeah um and then then i packed my stuff my uh my brother drove me to the airport in frankfurt which is like two hours away mm-hmm. and yeah basically what happened is that my flight was canceled but that was like like that was just you know the thing that just happened like my flight just got canceled yeah. and nothing that you did nothing yeah weird, nothing that i did you know just, oh, all right this is annoying so I, I rescheduled it like two days later and but th- that was still like pretty hard because like frankfurt airport was basically empty there was like there were probably like double the amount of employees to like travelers because mm. well, i don't know i saw like 50 people there which is like crazy it's like frankfurt the center of europe yeah 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 busiest airport in europe right yeah i guess so uh, at least the eu or something yeah Yeah. so i uh i rescheduled it to like the next day or two days Mm -hmm. after and yeah uh, called my brother like can you like bring me uh bring me back home and then i um then then i went again this time my brother didn't want to drive me again because he's like uh what if it goes wrong again yeah so so i went by train and uh but when i was in frankfurt then they told me oh yeah everything is fine just this flight is a problem so we just rescheduled that but then i went back to uh, frankfurt and then there 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 was there were two different reasons so first of all i couldn't transit between japan like this from haneda airport to narita airport yeah because japan doesn't allow any foreigners to step foot into the country exactly yeah i would need a visa right there were visas for like just traveling between airports okay but that's like a whole clusterfuck of like the um like the airline has to allocate those you know stuff like that interesting interesting yeah it's it's very weird it's called shore pass yeah Yeah. you couldn't just do that right then yeah and i couldn't i like there's no like i could probably have called them but can you please like do that for me yeah 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 but usually it's like okay i book it and then they have to like figure out right, yeah. how that's done and, and you that's would think that they would have done that yeah and i've i've had the same thing in china mm. and they also got like a small like mm. transitor mm. visa and you know but not, maybe those are even gone right now yeah like for covid it might ch- have changed everything yeah right? yeah exactly so they told me that and like they asked me like weird question so do you have like a taxi like allocated already for like the trip between that like all these like I can just do that there you know like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like right, these right, very right. bureaucratic kind of right, questions and right. uh, but then i was like okay let me reschedule again this time without like this transit yeah but then i went up and um because you previously had like this document which said uh that i could travel directly to saipan mm-hmm. so basically uh there was like i called the trump ban where it's yeah. like no no one from the schengen area which is like uh, a super set of the eu or something mm-hmm. Uh, can go like who's been there like two weeks pri- prior can go to america so they have to be out of the schengen area for two weeks mm-hmm. and we got a document that said 
now that's uh, lifted for Saipan. Or it looked like it said that. Exactly. That it looked like that. that. It looked like it had said that Trump had, the news was like, oh, Trump has lifted some sort of a, he's lifted the ban. And it was like, oh, Trump is, okay, well, you're good to go. You're yeah. good to go, yeah. And, yeah, and, and but everybody agreed with that at the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up to that point, yeah. was like, okay, can you reschedule that? And then it was always the same story. It's like, okay, let me get my supervisor. So uh, she got her supervisor, like the woman at the counter. And then the supervisor was like, and then they call like the chain up to like America and like the uh, embassy there or, or something like that. And um, then they were like, no, you can't go. Like this, this doesn't like, they were just shaking their heads. Like, no, this is, uh, you still like this, this is invalid. Like you still have to go, like you can't go to America due to this You had ban. to be out for two weeks. Yes. You had to, you, so you had to be somewhere else for two weeks. Yes, exactly. So I couldn't just go. Um, so yeah, then I was like, really, that was like incredibly frustrating. And it was like at the airport for like eight hours or something right, crazy, right, like right. just trying to figure out stuff. And then like, I don't know, some Czech citizen citizen came and wanted to ask me for help and was like, oh, you know, like, how do I get rid of him now? And you know, he was pretty annoying. And then I just gave him five euros or something to, cause he was asking for money. So I was like, whatever. And yeah, then I drove home again by train and um, I was like, okay, is, th is this it? Like my, right. my journey is over. Also, I, I lost like the, the thousand yeah. dollars for the, for the trip. Flight. And uh, then I was like, okay, what do I do? Um, but we already figured out something, which was to go to Istanbul. So right the very next day in the morning, I booked the flight to Istanbul, I got everything packed already because yep, I just yeah, had the stuff. And I um, woke up my dad because he's like night shift. So mm -hmm. this was like at 10 a.m. And what, what struck me is that he was like, usually uh, like kind of sluggish, like mm -hmm. kind of like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll do it, you know, mm -hmm. just let me sleep. And then he comes like half an hour later. But he, w he was like on time, everything, because mm -hmm. he, I think he felt that this was like important and like the, and maybe even like this would be like, the time when I would actually like mm -hmm. go for good. Yeah, so I went to, he drove me to Stuttgart, dropped me off and Stuttgart again, completely empty. Mm -hmm. Just when I walked right at the end, like of the, uh, the terminals are just right beside it. Stuttgart isn't that big. Um, there was just this group of like Turkish people that were just waiting for that flight. And like, this was kind of weird because it kind of had like this island of like normality where it's like, okay, mm. like people, had like these normal questions they would like go in the wrong way you know like sure. and oh sir sure. can you please you know right everything that's why it's like yeah that that that's oddly normal yeah right and yeah then i got um very normal flight went to went to istanbul got a taxi um in istanbul it felt like very normal like it was very busy lots of people um what Airport the, very full. The, so they had no lockdown in Turkey, right? No At lockdown. That time. Yeah. What about masks? Everybody was wearing them. Yes, Ma many people were yeah. wa would wear them uh, at the at the airport and i think it was required at the airport mm. and outside there was a mandate to have to wear a fast uh, mask mm -hmm. outside. However, like at some point i got really annoyed with the mask, so mm. i was like okay, let me just not wear it until somebody tells me to. Yeah, okay. You know, it's good experience. Like, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot it. You yeah, know, like okay. uh, I was in, you know, whatever. Right. And then like it went further and further. And at some point, like I was walking directly past like a uh, policeman. Yeah. I think, yeah, they wore the mask and nothing, nothing. like, like yeah. three times, something like that. And yeah. I was like, all right, I guess that's, that's how it is here. Yeah. And yeah. And I, like, I could hear like when I went to bed, like there was still like parties going on music playing well, Istanbul, everything yeah be parties so yeah it's a, it's a party town yeah absolutely okay so you stayed in Istanbul for two weeks which is two not weeks. that's not a bad gig yeah a lot of people go to Istanbul for two weeks for yeah. fun so that wasn't then, too bad and then what happened yeah and Istanbul was pretty cheap like they their uh, oh, currency yeah. crashed so Airbnb very cheap uh, then what happened? So I went to Istanbul without like booking the next flight because like, okay, I can figure that out because as, as long as my clock starts for the two mm -hmm. weeks, mm -hmm. then because I can like waste my time in Istanbul mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. as I want because I have like two weeks to fill. Um, so yeah, so then I booked the flight 
like just finding flights was extremely hard. So I tried to figure out if I can even take if I can even take these flights. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is you can book all of them. Like you can just go pay the money and then you have the ticket. Mm. But that by no means that you can take it because uh, of all this uh, Corona stuff. Mm. Ah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, all flights which were to transit through uh, Japan, like yep. within Japan, yep. those were out of the questions. Those were the cheapest. Then uh, Qatar Airlines. It mm -hmm. actually turns out that to take Qatar Airlines, you have to have uh, a visa for your itinerary until they stop you serving. So once I switch from Qatar Airlines to United, I have to have a visa for wherever I Wherever I'm you switching. Are switching, and yeah. where would you have been? Switching? That would have been in South Korea, and so they cancelled. And they cancelled um, all visa waivers for okay. German citizens, okay. and like getting visas would be very hard uh, right. from from there on. Yeah. So that was out of the question. So the only route I found, like, th there were there were some weird routes like through Ethiopia. But those okay, would be like, weird. yeah. So the route I found was from um, Turkey to like from Istanbul all the way through to South Korea, Seoul, mm -hmm. then to Narita airport, mm -hmm. and then from Narita to Guam, and then from Guam to Saipan. Yeah. Quite well, you quite have to do hops. the Guam to Saipan thing. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's like now. That's unavoidable. Yeah, there are no direct flights here. They used to. There used to be. There yeah. used to be all kind of direct flights here. But now, yeah, they all transit through Guam. And I, I think they're all, it's only United, I believe. And I believe it's, I believe you have to be overnight in Guam mm. as well. Mm. At least overnight. You Actually. did a little longer than that though. Yeah, I did a little longer. Okay. So, so talk about that so talk about that experience. Yeah, so I yeah, I went from Turkey to South Korea. And there it already started with like this bureaucracy bullshit where it's like going to um going to the counter and um like they were like all right, yeah, mm, okay, I don't get this. Let me uh, let me redirect you to the supervisor, like the the, per the person behind mm. the counter. So I went to the supervisor, and they're actually the same thing. Like this is in South Korea. No, this was in Turkey still. Gotcha. In Turkey, so they were like, uh, mm, okay, yeah, I don't get this. Like the supervisor was like, okay, let me talk to my supervisor. Mm. So they were getting a supervisor. Then the supervisor came, and just for just for me, like trying to go to the United States. And uh, they were like trying to figure all of that out. They were like, okay, yeah, he's been in Turkey for two weeks, despite being German, you know, like all of that. Oh, right, he right, has right. an ESTA, it's not, a, it's not expired. He can go and then like she had to go, like it took like an hour or so to get, or maybe even longer to get my, j just uh, when, after she came, like after mm -hmm. she, uh, she helped me, uh, like the final supervisor basically. <laughs> uh, and then I finally got the boarding pass. Okay. But then I had to give up my, or like I had to check in my luggage or like they were asking if I wanted mm. to check in my luggage. And at this point I actually got rid of all my like check-in luggage because like everything on the website said no check-in luggage. So it's like, oh no. So I have to give up my check-in luggage. So I actually sent that back to Germany. Gotcha. Like the whole, the whole thing. And just have like the essential stuff that would uh, fit into that, that bag over there. So, and then they were like, oh, um, you can't take that bag as like carry on luggage. Like you have to, you have to check it in. You couldn't like, take any bags for carry on? Well, she was like, oh no, that's too big. And I was like, okay, yeah, so what's the size limit? And I was like, oh, there is no size limit. It just can't be big bags, you know? <laughs> and that was a Corona regulation. It's like, okay, no more big bags, something like that. <laughs> mm. Very weird, very weird. And then I was like, uh, can I at least take my laptop? And, and then they were like, Oh, uh, you know what? Just just try getting through uh, the gate, like the um, to to get into the transit area. So there's no real regulations. Yeah. On it's that just front, very strange, very Kafkaesque. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where it's like very Kafkaesque. It's like the. It's so in intransparent, and and it's been like the whole time. Like, yeah. uh, nobody knows what's going on. Like everybody's like, okay, there are rules, but we don't uh, like fully know them. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's fine. And it th turns out it isn't fine, like with the, uh, with mm -hmm. the flight to here. Um, and, and then the luggage. And then actually it turns out I could just take it in. Like I could just get it into the transit area. And that was, of course, like a big relief because like there was all my, all my stuff. And you know how, how these flights, like to the Pacific, mm 
mm-hmm. I don't want to lose like my shit, no, especially like no, having nothing. And you've got all these uh, all these hops. Yeah, right? and they have to, you know, yeah, feed it from one to the next. So I was like, uh, no, I like. I mean, I always was like, okay, you can take it, but mm-hmm. I was like, because I was like, like. If it, if this is a price I have to pay to get to here, mm-hmm. then I guess I I have to pay it basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, then I then I was finally in the transit area, and then but then when I had to go to um, South Korea, there was like this queue of people who were like waiting so they could uh, hand over a piece of paper to would basically agree to like a really really expensive quarantine. Like in case something is, there's like this quarantine and it like you have to pay, I don't know, a few hundred per day. In South Korea? In South Korea. In case what? In case, I don't know. Like in case how your do you visa get, doesn't how do you, work. Oh, okay. Something like that. Your visa work. Or you miss your flight. I don't know. Like. Okay. Very weird. Yeah. I was like, okay, now I got this far. So, you know, I just sign it. Like, uh, and like the general rule is there. If there's like some bureaucrat that says you have to do that and you know that you don't have to do that then you, by no by no chance you can convince them that you don't have to do that like for example a lot of these flights don't have explicitly a covid test that you re- right, that it's required right, right. but still there were all these people who were like oh do you have a covid test luckily i had one because yeah. i i kind of expected that to happen um so uh yeah i, I at, at no point i would be like okay let me convince you that the rules are actually different because like they it seems like they just uh, make up the rules at the spot. N- not really, but you know, they're like, they enforce them however that's it fits. Very, that's a very like 1984 yeah. George Orwell. That's one of the things that really stand. I mean, it's in the first, when he's setting up the world, right? That's in the first pages where he's like, there's no more laws. Yeah. But clearly everybody has some idea of what they're supposed to do. Like it's, it's this weird game of like social norms. Yeah. Yes. You know? But it sounds like this is like a recurring pattern it like in the trip from Turkey with the masks yeah to like d- doing this thing and then do you have a covid test yeah. to like all of these it's just the the sort of the scope of acceptable behavior is being narrowed down narrowed down narrowed down to the point where it's like if you don't it's either the choice that you have is either go through all of like the bullshit or go through a gigantic hassle and have your time like wasted so just for the stand just for for like expediency's sake everybody goes through the bullshit yeah exactly and i did go through the bullshit yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and then i was in south south korea and south korea was again completely empty even more in seoul 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 is gigantic like it's it's a whole complex yeah like you could walk there for hours yeah. and hours just yeah. going to two different it stores empty. it was it was even emptier than frankfurt i mean maybe that was because of the time mm-hmm. but i was there for 16 hours so you know at some mm-hmm. point the people would show up there so yeah yeah there was and like basically all like there was a lounge for like basically all passengers who would stay mm-hmm. longer you would expect that to be like a big thing sure but, but they're like a big area but there was just like a couple of uh not beds but like uh you know couches yeah. more or less yeah there was like a handful of them and that was basically for all the people who would stay longer mm-hmm. than that um and there I actually met a kenyan guy okay and that was very like he was very like approaching and he was there at seoul for uh six months he got he's he got stuck there because of other visa, visa issues mm-hmm. like he wanted to i think micronesia i'm not sure if it's micronesia but something like that like some far away place that has like no strict visa requirement just so he can get there as a kenyan guy because there was war going on right, okay. he told me he lost his family okay he repeatedly told me he has like these big riches there buried somewhere oh he's a nigerian prince yeah, he's a nigerian prince yeah <laughs> he you know he was a very weird character okay. All and right. it was very hard to talk to him he wasn't okay. like a good conversationalist in my like in my view uh, uh but like he had a pretty like crazy story to tell as well where sure. it was like so at least it's entertaining right? yeah yeah and he uh, had some conspiracy theories about covid but that's of you know course. yeah 
We all have. We all have. <laughs> we all have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even the. It's yeah. not a theory if it's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unless it's science, but yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the science. That's a conspiracy too. Yeah. Anyway, so you're in you're in Seoul. And you're in there Seoul. for 16 hours. Then what happens? How do, how does the flight between? Is there any hiccups in the flight between? Well, there 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 is Korea actually a hiccup. Japan. Yeah, there was one. There was one small hiccup where where they were like suddenly, like I mean, I'm already on my trip. Yeah. So it's like okay, now they are like, oh, you actually have to have a flight back from Saipan to Germany. You know, so it would be like you were you're in a train and suddenly the train stops and it's like, oh yeah, everybody get, gets checked. You're already like checked, but he checks you again. It's like, oh yeah, do you have a ticket back like to your home? It's like, wait, why why didn't you tell me earlier? You know. Mm-hmm. So again, like the same pattern where it's like just random rules pop up yeah. and you suddenly have to like obey them. And But that was like very bad because um, I only had like so like a v- little amount of time left sure, 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 sure. until my flight. And if sure. my flight went, I don't know what happened. Like I signed, I, lined, uh, I already signed away my wa- rights. Just, right, you know? right. They'll just throw you in some South Korean quarantine. Well, who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one guy was there for six months. So I was like, okay. Hey, Maybe maybe, I'll just maybe stay that. In the airport forever. But <laughs> I'll, on the other hand, like he's kind of shady, you know. Right, like right. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. So I was like, all like pretty much panicking, and I actually wrote you, but uh, yeah. to be like, oh, can you help me? But uh, I think you were asleep. But then I wrote like other like crypto people to be like, I know this sounds like my phone got hacked or something like that, but I really need a credit card right now, basically, because right, right. my credit card didn't work. The oh, credit no. card of my parents didn't work. Oh no. But I think it was due to IP. Like it okay. seemed like we got uh, hacked. Okay, okay. So what I did then, I just asked uh, like some crypto guy that was yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. friend of mine, to be like, oh yeah, let's just order it completely through you, but in my name. Okay. So and then that worked out fine. And then I finally could give them the tic- the thing. I got uh, got my boarding pass yep. from there to uh, Japan and also from Japan to Guam. Not the final one for some reason, but okay. uh, from there to Guam. And so I was like. I'm set. Like okay. I got all the boarding passes. Everything, everything is perfect. Everything is fine. Um, so yeah. So I went onto the flight there. No hiccups. I mm-hmm. was in a very good mood because mm-hmm. <laughs> everything good. worked. Yep, yep. Got into the airport at uh, Narita, and then just basically waited out. But then they called my name through the speaker again. Oh, okay. Narita airport, completely empty. Like the story, okay. same yep, story. Yep, yep. Huge, huge very airport. huge airport like i don't know i i met like even less like 10 people cuz mm-hmm. you know whatever uh nothing going on there and then you know how like and yeah then they were like just confirming stuff about me and like mm-hmm. okay yeah, this is the way but then i got a message on my phone that said my esta which is the visa waiver like electronic yeah something something i don't know it's like so that basically like from cer- if you're from certain countries especially eu countries and european countries you can come to the states yeah. without for for 90 days or whatever without a visa whatsoever yes. you just show up yeah you just show up but you do got to sign you, you do have to apply for the esta yeah which is supposed to be very very fast usually yeah, it's within it's a few y- minutes usually it's in like two hours like yeah. my fastest one was like two hours okay so but it's like usually it's like for a long time you like mm-hmm. you like apply for it it costs 15 dollars mm-hmm. each time but then often it just got canceled just like just like that um so there now was did you know was it is there an expiration date on it or anything like yes that? There is. but it's so in, within two years so my, the expiration date that was on there was in 2020 okay. at 2022 in in 2022 so that was the expiration date oh see i didn't know this part so the expiration date for your esta was 2022 yeah and it wasn't 2022 while you're traveling yes your esta gets canceled yes just just so so it's not that it expired yeah well it said it expired like that's the error message but that would be like you know somebody stealing your car and being like oh your car expired basically or something like that you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> your car ownership expired. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. And so there's nothing you could have done on that one. Well, really. Well, I could have been like just to be like hyper super sure because I already knew like they would 
just oh, right, expire okay. that because that already happened but like within like a month oh right right okay like so after like okay. 30 days you're like okay you didn't travel there's your oh, like I your, you. your esther is you. gone okay i see what you're saying but this was like within like two weeks okay so it was like I, I applied for it and then boom 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 two weeks later it's already gone interesting so that was like completely unexpected because it was way early and it was just before <laughs> i wanted to board the plane to uh to america like that was the final step so I was like, okay, holy shit, what, what do we do now? Like I, again, panicked, got like in like, like a very emotional stage and like was, was calling with the, like the hotline for like the Esther mm-hmm. and everything. And he said like, okay, yeah, you need to, like, you need to talk to your airline and say this and that. And mm-hmm. then I, I went that and all of them were just shaking their heads like, no, mm-hmm. and you can't do that and stuff like that. And I was like, oh no. This is what the guy says on the phone. And then eventually it turns out, yeah, they actually did what they, what he said on the phone. And it turns out I need a ESTA to go to, to go to America. So yeah, I reapplied to the ESTA, mm-hmm. but like usually it's qu- pretty quick, but at that time it was already like 10 PM or something like mm-hmm. that in like America, like San Francisco. So basically like the, the latest. So uh, I was like, okay. Like what, what do you do now? And then they got like a supervisor for me just to, you know, mm-hmm. watch me. So I don't do anything stupid and, you know, and then she was very quickly like, uh, and, and you know how like mm-hmm. Japanese people are, they're like very polite and like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm so sorry. And then, you know, they have to like enforce some really, really crazy rule. Right, exactly. It's like, oh, we're so sorry. We have to like we're completely. So sorry, <laughs> but here we're throwing you off a building. Yeah. Sorry, though, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, uh, yeah, and she was like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Could you, like, please uh, book a flight back to Germany, like, right now? I was like, oh, okay, so, I, like, with my own money, like, I, like, or it's like, like I have to, like, just do that. Uh, and so, yeah, but uh, we can cancel it later if it, like, turns out that you, you know, stuff like that. I was like, I'm not going to do that. So, it's like, I was like, no, I'm, you know, like, this sounds stupid. I actually want to go to Saipan. So, right. let me, let me just try to stay to stay here in like like my my flight wasn't gone yet so let me just wait until my flight is gone and then i can just take the next flight because there were flights daily mm-hmm. so i i was just okay let me take the next flight and she's like mm, okay yeah but then you have to pay the security fee because i was like like i wasn't supposed to be through the night at the airport or something like that mm-hmm. and then i was like, okay how much is the security fee and she was like mm, like you know she's like uh uh-huh. You know, something something bad is gonna. It's just like, yeah, it's it's eight hundred dollars. You know, it's like eight hundred dollars. Like you can get a pretty good hotel for eight hundred dollars per night. Damn straight. <laughs> you Damn probably straight. know that. Yeah. It's a five star, man, easily for eight hundred a night. No problem. I got something even better. You know. Oh, what did you get? <laughs> so yeah, uh, but before that, before I even knew, <laughs> I had to go like to the ATM. Put my credit card in there. I had to do it three times because, like, there was a limit on how much it would spit out in one go. Mm-hmm. Each time, like, around like two hundred something dollars, mm-hmm. uh, like thirty thousand yen. I got out the cash and then eventually I handed it over to them. I was like, okay, yeah, I guess this is what I'm doing. Because, like, how when does that happen? That mm-hmm. you just you know mm-hmm. hand over directly from your ATM to like a bunch mm-hmm. of strangers, like a ridiculous amount shake of money. Shakedown, shakedown money, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like robbery. Yeah, it felt like robbery, but you know, they were two very like polite and kind women, so (laughs) it's like, yeah, (laughs) could be worse robbery. (laughs) Worse ways to get robbed, I guess. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and before before my flight left without me, they were like, uh, I was just sitting there, and like five people were supervising, like the high ups, like below that, like all this, all the different layers of supervisors were standing around me. Like I was some kind of prisoner or something. And they were like, uh, yeah. And then he repeatedly asking, okay, what's the status of his ESTA? Cause they, it, it already went up so f- uh, mm-hmm. far in the chain that I was like, they were directly talking to like the people in the immigration stuff. Wow. So it's like, oh yeah, I guess like this is this is what's happening right now. Like completely surreal, of course. Like mm-hmm. anybody who would go through that would say, okay, this is like the most surreal mm-hmm. shit ever. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, then my flight left, and then they were like, okay, your flight left. Now you, we prepare you for um, the night. And at this point, I was like, complete like a complete low point for mm-hmm. me. I was like, 
like it was beyond frustration it was beyond uh like um it it was almost like i'm yeah it was kind of despair you know like mm-hmm. i was i was in a state of despair like like i like this could be like or also like what am i doing like mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. is this really like what i don't know fate mm-hmm. like gave me or like is this uh like or and also like why why does this why did this happen like or mm-hmm. c- could i have could i have avoided it somehow like mm-hmm. what what did i do wrong mm-hmm, stuff mm-hmm. like that um so it, i was just sitting there they did like they they escorted me into a uh utility closet i sent you the video like it looked it like was, an utility it was closet. A utility closet yes it was definitely it, it, a utility ha- closet. it had a bed it had like this well, it, to call it, it a bed is a bit it had a cot yeah it had it, cot. Had, it had a flat surface which yeah. was kind of soft yeah. and it has it had a blanket yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh it had a toilet it was like but it was like one of those like metal doors mm-hmm. you know like these windows mm-hmm. with these mm-hmm. uh like not really see through and um when you turn on the light it was like super bright mm-hmm. and when you turn it off it was completely dark like complete darkness yeah so i um i was just sitting there they did the bed and then eventually like like i always go, like when i finally made like this okay i'm actually like she asked me like a final time i was like okay yeah i'm i'm this is what i'm doing i, I will stay here because i still had the f- chance to fly back because there was still mm-hmm. a flight back to germany and she was like like why why are you doing that like i, I could see that like, what the hell like <laughs> dude why are you just not flying back? Like, why are you paying so much money and, you know, mm-hmm. staying there? But, you know, in, in in retrospect, it was, of course, like the right decision. But at that point, I was like, I'm basically trusting that some <laughs> bureaucrat in, uh, I don't know where, San Francisco, somewhere in the U.S. is going to see like, oh, okay, yeah, Tobias Rook. Uh, okay, yeah, German citizen. He already had like a bunch of Estas that all expired um, or got canceled or whatever. All right. Yeah, seems good. Like right. that that was what I was waiting for. That was your that that was the only outcome like you were you were betting on that. Yeah, I was betting on that. Betting it's on like that. okay, this is going to happen. And you know, like you don't want to bet on like a bureaucrat doing his job on time. Like usually not. No. Usually like it's quick, but you never know. Like yeah. so yeah, I I wait and and you know, luckily it wasn't the uh like weekend cuz mm-hmm. then you d- I don't know what. Like it wasn't the weekend, so that was good. So I was there in the utility closet, uh, trying to sleep because I was like completely out of schedule. And then I had like a Zoom call with like a bunch of crypto people. It's so, like explaining that. And then eventually I got like the mail. Your ESTA got approved. I was like, thank God. I was like so relieved. Uh, I actually interrupted Omri's speech. Like he was saying, I was like, no, 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 wait. My ESTA just got approved, guys. My ESTA got approved. <laughs> he was like, all right yeah okay yeah back to what i was talking about (laughs) and then i um yeah and then i could just go like there were no more hiccups um they got me like really like janky food that Mm -hmm. i could that i could eat for the morning later i got like a really nice meal i was like okay i deserve this like Mm -hmm. like, give me get give me the best like at the restaurant (laughs) and they were still supervising me like there were two people watching me that i don't yes that I don't flee the restaurant <laughs> to somewhere else. I don't know where I would have gone, like, you yeah, know? Right. And two people, mind you, like, it's two people. Very strange. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then, and then I got to Guam. The problem is, though, that my flights before that were, like, perfectly, like, lined up, so, like, mm-hmm. they would be end-to-end. However, the Saipanese flights, they only go, like, every three days, or, like, three something times, like yeah, three times a week. Two or three like times a week, yeah, yeah. two or three times a week. So I missed that flight and the next flight would be like three days later mm-hmm. from Guam to Saipan. So what I had to do was to stay in Guam for three days. Um, so I could fly the next mm-hmm. flight. But you know, th- that wasn't, that wasn't a problem. Like they got like this really nice hotel. Mm-hmm. However, the food was really bad. Like it was, l- doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, D- do you had have the same? We like were there overnight, so we got uh, one. We did get one meal when we showed yeah. up, and it was crap. Yeah, or and did, I had. Or did we? Maybe no. I think maybe we showed up. I think. No, I think we showed up so late. Maybe we didn't. They gave us some water. I think. Mm. I think we showed up so late that there was no meals, and then we just stayed overnight, and we left early, like five, six in the morning. 
So yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. We got like muffins and stuff in the airport. So I'm assuming that they didn't. Yeah, they didn't give us. Yeah. Give us a meal, but it doesn't surprise me that the food in the Guam quarantine would be terrible. Yeah, yeah. What's it doesn't surprise me one bit. Yeah, and actually, if I wanted to go to Guam, I had I would have had to stay there for two weeks. Right. So yeah, two week quarantine. Yeah. So just imagine like all these guys who want to stay in Guam have to eat that for two weeks. I think they can order stuff from like uh, delivery. But if you get like the stuff like on your doorstep, then you're like, okay, let me just try you know, to eat it. To try it. At some point, I was just like, okay, whatever. I just fast, you know. <laughs> I I just fast, and then yeah, then I got on the plane from Guam to Saipan, and that was full. Like that was completely packed. I think there were no seats left. Actually, mm. I think. And before that, like in from uh, Istanbul to. Uh, What's it? Seoul. South Korea, yeah. yeah, South Korea. It was like basically empty. Like I, I had like a row. Mm. Like that was a very long. Yeah, just for myself, yeah. and I just slept all the way through. So it was yeah. pretty convenient. Yeah, but nice. um, yeah. So I was there, in, and then I finally came to Saipan. They drove me all the way, like from the south, from the very south of the island, all the way to the north of the island, and then got into like this kind of shabby hotel. Like mm -hmm. you could tell, it's like okay, this is like I don't know. 10 years like yeah. of like low maintenance so yeah. it's like okay like everything is kind of like not white but like uh like very not gray but like this Off yellow white. yellowish yeah, you know weird, yeah. yellowish well, color things, things kind of get things decay real yeah. fast here yes so like even it it could be a year and you would think that it's like 10 years you know what i mean this this environment just the jungle just wants to take everything back at all times, you know what I mean? So you just... It's yeah. Just, yeah, Poseidon is calling. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, yeah, but the good thing there was uh, the food was very good for some good, reason. Yeah. So I was good there and Alex brought me like uh, anything I wanted. So he would just, you know, you can drop off stuff for people mm -hmm. that you know there because, mm -hmm. you know... And that was five days. That was five days. Yeah, so you did three days in Guam, five days. So your total travel was like over 20 days, something like that, over li like 25 days or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that, like almost a month, like less that's, than a month. That's yeah. a lot, like three weeks at least. <laughs> yeah, three weeks at least. That's a, yeah. that's, a long time, that's a long time to travel just to go from Germany to here. Yeah. Even though this is a long distance, three weeks seems like a very <laughs> long, that seems like you might have been able to take like an old school steamship. Yeah, you know <laughs> yeah. I mean? like, like 1920s, I'm gonna jump on a steamship, <laughs> just headed for <laughs> headed for the South Pacific. It's the so new world. Weeks, <laughs> the new world. Three <laughs> weeks later. Yeah, and then and so since you've been here, you've experienced some American holidays. Mm. Um, you've experienced the Super Bowl actually. The Super Bowl. You <laughs> just got to a few days. That. You had your first Thanksgiving. Yeah. Went here. That was good when you came. No turkey though, but you know. no, we didn't. I, I already had enough turkey. Fair enough. Yeah, we did two <laughs> weeks of turkey. Two weeks of turkey is is enough turkey for a lot of people. Um, yeah, man, it's a crazy trip. I, I think it's an indication, and I don't think things have gotten any better with the travel. Actually, it got worse. I think. Yeah. So tur I was looking like at where should I stay and stuff. And Turkey, they now have a curfew from like, I don't know, 9 p.m. to like mm. 5 a.m. So that's like not really you can do, not anything you can do in the evening. It's very like, everything is just, everything is clamping down everywhere. One of the things I'm noticing though, so you left and <laughs> like the day that you left or maybe two days later, Merkel announced like we're going into like a hard lockdown, yes. right? Wasn't it? She, yeah, it was she like that. Announced it before you left. Was that it, or she announced? Yeah, it, it was like, like there might there there will be th it was like there will be probably a hard lockdown like on like. And, and are they still in that same? Oh, lockdown? it's even it's even worse. So they locked down harder. So that was end of November. Yes. And uh, now we're it? in February, mid November. Yeah. yeah. Now we're in February. They've stayed in that hard lockdown. Yeah. It's worse. Yeah. And it has, it's showing no sign of letting up. Yeah. Like my, my grandma, like she called me like, I don't know, three days ago. Yeah. And my cousin wanted to talk to me because, I don't know, he, I, she showed him a picture of like what I sent. Yeah. 
and he was like, "Oh, can I talk to him?" Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know, this it's it's really sad because like we have like this whole family in Germany, mm -hmm. but my grandma can only see one of them at a time. So no, um, so only my cousin. No, like um, you're only allowed like one visitor at a time. Yeah, yeah. She she can't see her daughter and That's her crazy. grandson at the at same the time. Same time. Yeah. That's like that's 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 inhuman yeah yeah that's that's yeah could you imagine people are gonna people are deciding that they're gonna live like that yeah it's not I, you can't live like that man yeah yeah it's and like before that like a couple of weeks ago i had a call with my grandma again and she was like um i, I told you about that she was like Oh, you know, like, it would be really nice to see you again. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you are happy in Saipan and if, uh, like, if, if everything is good in Saipan, maybe just, maybe just stay, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to come back. Which is, like, very weird for a grandma who, like, like, whenever I visited her, whenever I visited her, she was always like, oh, yeah, come again, you know, like, uh, you're coming so seldomly and, you know, come. Uh. But when I, now that I'm away, like, for like a quarter of a year she's like oh it's not it's not a big deal like you don't have to but that's so you're you're great and you said your grandmother's from poland right? yes so she's got to have a sense of like ooh, this feels kind of familiar yeah this feels sort of familiar because she right she actually she fled germany so she didn't have a visa uh, she fled to germany to germany yeah. she fled poland she didn't have a visa um originally um but like in in poland it's like you have to have a visa to get out of there mm -hmm. so they wouldn't let you out because so many people were just crossing the border sure. and never coming back sure again. of course so she was applying 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 and always like for more benign stuff so eventually yeah. what they got was they could visit um like their relatives in germany because they had like there was already a lot of relatives there and they uh but they had to come uh, back again so what they did, they just took as much as they could in like, like uh, suitcases that looked like just vacation. Mm -hmm. So they basically had to give up everything in uh, in Poland, and they had like a whole farm, like mm -hmm. with with chickens, with like land, mm -hmm. with like everything, which probably wouldn't amount too much in uh, under socialism. But, but it's it, what they had. Yeah, it's what they had. It's everything they had. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they they took all of that in their suitcases, went over to the went over to Germany and then just never came back. Mm -hmm. um, and she had like very poor German, like sh her English, uh, she doesn't speak English, but her German is still very like Polish or like mm -hmm. Silesian. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And um, yeah. But this was, this is the case for, this is what I've been trying to tell people is like, this is just a historical pattern, you know, that I bet if people look in their families, not too many generations it's so common that like you're not gonna have to go back too far on the sides of your family tree to find somebody in your own family who has that story like mm. we left with the clothes on our back basically we yeah. left with what we could carry yeah you know um it's especially if you're in a place that has some amount of like immigration and so like germany's got especially in the the last 50 years has a lot of immigration there from a lot of different places obviously the u.s so any american that's checking this out your family you definitely have that in your family mm. somewhere yeah. right um no matter your ethnicity background whatever search back in your family tree it's there but it's it's been very interesting to me to think about like you know, like you say, they left and there was the question of like, ah, you know, because it's shit here. We got to go. They feel a sense of urgency. They're trying to get out, trying to get out, trying to get out. But I wonder if like the Polish government had every once in a while to tamp things down, been like, well, we're cutting everybody a check. Mm, yes, they had that. They did. This, this, they always try the same thing. Yeah. Right. Well, back then you could still protest. Right. You know, there were no lockdowns. <laughs> so well, that, yeah, that's the other part, right? Yeah. And it's not, and it's like, you know, I've seeing even all these people talking about. I mean, first it started with Thanksgiving, right? 
everybody that goes to Thanksgiving, if you go to Thanksgiving two weeks later, yeah. watch, there's going to be all these COVID deaths in yeah. there. Christmas, New Year's, now Super Bowl. They're like, everybody who went to a Super Bowl party yeah, is yeah. going to die. If you went, you're going to die. Everybody's going to have COVID. You're going to die. And it's like the cultural norm of um, what? Just be by yourself. Yeah. Like they're forcing it in Germany. Yeah. They're forcing it in other places, but it's like in some places they're only able to force it because people are like going for it. You know, it's really scary. It's really scary, but it's like, I think I, I, I would hope that people listening there, they should, they shouldn't be dissuaded by like, well, I'll ask you this. Do you feel like it was worth it? All of the trouble that you went through? Oh, 100%. Okay. Like, if you if you look at this, like, okay, like, what could possibly be worth that kind of hassle? Yes. But, like, with the data I get from Germany mm -hmm. and with, like, all the experiences I was able to have here, like, 100% it was worth it. And I could, like, build, like, we could build stuff. Mm -hmm. I could build stuff with, with Alex. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is, like, incredible. Like, I'm... I feel extremely privileged to just to like be here, even though it's just for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, like I'm kind of envious of like Americans who can just be like, okay, yeah, let me just go to Saipan, you know, book a flight. But what's weird is they, well, one, they don't know it, it exists. Yeah. But two, it's like somehow it's like it's too much work for them. <laughs> it's less work for them to deal with like especially the people i know in california to deal with the lockdowns i'm like how is it that's crazy to me you know like wh we left in april when all this shit was just starting and i just feel like and and yeah we uprooted things and you know we had to leave some things back in the mainland obviously and in, in many ways we came with kind of the clothes on our back we came with our luggage allotment right yeah. we've had some things shipped since then but not so much but at the same time you also realize like how much you actually don't need yeah how much is just crap how much you're yeah. not using you know and i just had that that back so but what, what i did need were t-shirts so i had to buy yeah that. but that's <laughs> just about all you need here yeah. <laughs> like yeah. if you've got some board a couple pairs of board shorts some t-shirts and some flip-flops yeah <laughs> you're good and you can get the flip-flops here you know you find oh, yeah. some t-shirts i some got the i love say uh, <laughs> yeah yeah you, you just wear them to wear them till they wear out yeah <laughs> and then throw them away and that's what everybody have wearing. way too many socks actually yeah. never need long pants never gonna need those nope never gonna need anything more than a t-shirt you know i like i haven't worn a long sleeve anything since i've been here hmm you know, I, maybe I've worn some pants to go to some meetings. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I wore them once because my I didn't do the laundry in time, so I had to. <laughs> you, well, that, yeah, that, and that can happen too, right? Yeah. But it is interesting that there are these few places. It's weird to go through this. I think. I, I don't. How, none of us thought that we would go through something like this. You know, where, oh, I've got to flee my country. Mm -hmm. But it looks so different this time. It's so subtle. It's such a frog in a pot, mm. you know? Yeah, everybody we talk to, like, who are not, like, hyper aware of what's going on, it's like, oh, yeah, and then once everything will be open again, like, we can do X. And I said, yeah, once we do this, once we do that. Remember when it was once, the once there's a vaccine? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, once there's a vaccine, you know, now there's a vaccine. But it's like, oh, no, never mind. Once everybody's vaccinated. But even when everybody's vaccinated. Yeah. We're still Yeah, but that's the that's <laughs> the next, you know. <laughs> well, they've already said it now. Yeah. Right? They're like, even if everybody's vaccinated, there's still gonna be masks, there's still gonna be social distancing, probably still, still gonna lockdowns. Be lockdowns. Yeah. There's still gonna be and it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't it we're gonna do this until we get a vaccine? Wasn't that remember that? And then what uh, weren't we gonna do this until we flatten the curve? Like weren't yeah. we gonna do this until and But it's curious that I never bought that. I mean you were we, you were tweeting it on Twitter and I was like yeah that no, like of course that's that's what's gonna happen like and even if like worst case it doesn't like it, you're wrong like uh, mm -hmm. stuff doesn't turn out that it that everything is locked down and that things actually open up eventually okay yeah that's that's so bad I can go back to Germany and have like uh, yeah, or or just stay here you I know? could be wrong 
I'd rather be wrong in a tropical paradise. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather be wrong. Wrong and, in a and, tropical paradise. Yeah, yeah that's 100%, fine. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Except. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just gone beyond now the point of like, the point of right or wrong or like. Because it's almost it 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 feels to me it's like there's this level of there's this great level of sadness that I have mm. about it all, you know, because I think for some people, and I wonder like if you wouldn't have taken the trip that you did and you would have, for whatever reason, just decided, ah, I'll just stick it out. You know, I think we always find ways to like rationalize, you know? Oh it's yeah, like, totally. Ah, it wouldn't have mattered. It's it's not that bad. I could deal with it, you know. Oh yeah. And it's just it's it's a matter of like how bad does it get? But even less than how bad does it get, you know? You've come here. You've got point of sale systems in like in businesses here. You're able to build with that. You've got people paying with your ring that you've got on on your finger there that you that you developed and the cards and like in restaurants that are open. They are all open. They're all open. No like, masks. No, like you, you have to wear a mask from like enter to. Do you though? Do you though? Like yesterday, <laughs> Not really. we, yesterday we had like a really cool big. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, yes. you couldn't stay like all the way, yeah. but yeah, there was like seven people, no masks, great food, great conversations, everything. So, yeah, and this is like. That's e normal. Even here. even just that, like that's like why I came here. Like yeah. that's why I did the journey. I can't like, I I went to restaurants frequently in Germany but no more like you can order stuff from restaurants <laughs> great you can you can do uh take out yeah no, or let it deliver to you you know but yeah that and that's like where I'm, where i'm like yeah this was definitely worth it despite like all the stuff i had to go through see i think that you know i that what i hope like from this conversation like what i hope resonates with people and what people start thinking about is uh, well i hope some people see it who have i know that you're not alone in terms of your experience like maybe they didn't come to the south pacific but maybe they went somewhere right and so it's like i know you're not alone in the in the experience of of like traveling to another place and so i hope that people see this and are like like, I hope that we can start making connections and start figuring out where where are the places in the world where it's all good yeah. still. And that you can go to. And that we can st and that that community can start coming up, you know, helping helping each other to find their way between various different places. So like. Yeah, it's it should be it should be encouraging. How old are you? Twenty five? 26 26 yeah. it should be encouraging to people to be like okay tobias could do that he could go on this yeah. trip literally like halfway around the world literally to the i mean you could call i guess you could call it the middle of nowhere but it's like it's definitely somewhere yeah it is somewhere it's just a hidden somewhere yeah right it's it's which is nice yeah and i think everybody here is very happy that it's a hidden somewhere mm. you know I think they might be angry at, at us for talking about it as much as we do, right? Well, but but it is special, like it is. It's yeah. a special place. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Um, and it's been made better by you being here, dude. Oh. So like, hopefully we can figure out the way to that. This can be your permanent home. Yeah. You know? And hopefully, I think there are ways. Yeah. yeah, there's ways for sure. We'll get. Uh, I mean, after, if. If you're dedicated enough to go through what you went through <laughs> to get here, you know, figuring out a way for you to stay is, I, I think everybody can be dedicated to that. So, yeah, yeah man, I, I appreciate the conversation. I know we'll be having more of these as we go. Um, crazy story. Yeah. What would you, I mean, what are you, what are you thinking for, for the future? What did you pull, what have you pulled out of this experience as, as mm. you take it into the next chapter? Huh, interesting question. So what do I take for the future? So yeah, I'm pretty... Well, I don't plan super far mm -hmm. in my life because I'm like kind of this adventurer mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, whenever I find a new thing mm -hmm. that's like perfect, 
I like just go all the way with that. So, like with crypto. So, okay, mm -hmm. crypto seems like the thing changed my life completely. So now it's crypto. Well, how do you feel different? Like, do you, do you feel that with this experience that there that a part of you changed? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, one thing is that I'm much more like how do you say like spiritual because mm -hmm. we did like mm -hmm. the practice at the beach and everything with with the other people in the morning. Um, I'm much more. I think like I'm I'm I know m I'm much more certain of what I want like to achieve like with with the company with this island with with you know whatever and that I have like this like very strong like meaning when I'm like okay mm -hmm. this is this is what I'm going to do for like this is going to be how I have my imprint on the world mm -hmm. and just having that is already like very and like this is what Jordan Peterson has been talking about mm -hmm. like his entire thing is like okay once you have meaning then you can endure so many so many more things so I'm not at all worried that I will have a trouble like that I will have trouble to stay here permanently mm -hmm. or some way um, and that I will figure things out um, yeah and I th yeah from that and also I think I've just become more more of an adult like more responsible sure. for myself and everything because you know this point of sale system is like a kind of like a big responsibility because you know you're, is, you're, yeah. you're responsible that the money goes there mm -hmm. and if something goes wrong you're it's on you you're responsible yep. Yep. yeah we just had like a bit of an issue with a uh, fees because mm -hmm. we like we added the post office mm -hmm. and that charges a small fee but then uh, Alex was like oh yeah did, did you tell them about that and was like oh shit Right. Like now we just enabled it, so like we reimbursed them and you know stuff like that, and yeah, and like if I were if I just was like working at HP, where it's mm -hmm. like previously working, mm -hmm. like none of that would be like oh yeah that's like, uh, you know that's like your thing that you are like building and like your face is on mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. like it's just you're like one cock in the machine and if something mm -hmm. goes wrong you know. Either you figure it out or someone else figured it out, it doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. or nobody figures it out. And but no, this is uh this is completely different here. And I think that's that's one of the ways I've grown. Yeah, yeah well I mean that's the that means the adventure was worth it, I guess. When you grow in that way is the key. I think that's the that's the most important thing. Well um And I think the journey, like in retrospect, is actually kind of it's it, it's not a bad memory of having that like mm. going through going through like turkey and like being locked up there in this room um like i i don't remember it negatively it's like it's just something i had to go through it's like almost like a ritual you know mm -hmm. kind of not really but a rite of passage yeah a rite of passage yeah. like almost like a sacrifice yeah. and and i yeah. had to like i actually had to throw away like four point of sale systems because they wouldn't let me ship that mm -hmm. uh through DHL so I just threw them in the trash which was like you know great you know there goes mm -hmm. my dreams mm -hmm. but yeah you know that's that's the price you have to pay to be free I guess <laughs> yeah well I think that's a good good way to end it thanks for sitting down with me thanks so much for having yep, me I hope people get a lot out of this and um, I hope people well, they should definitely go and check out b.cash. Yeah, it's B E, like, <laughs> like the verb, <laughs> to be, like just be, and then dot, and then cash. Yeah, and, really and cool. Um, pretty groundbreaking, and people are always blown away, like when you're doing the, the things that you do here. So, yeah, I, I think. Yeah. I, th I, I hope that you being here helps to attract more people here. If for nothing else, then it's like, I think it's a, it'll be a great service to people who want to be creative, who want to build things, who want to grow themselves during this time when everybody's being like shrunk down and compressed yeah. in people who want to like expand themselves. It's funny that that would end up happening in like a tiny place, right? That you yeah. go to a tiny place yes. to expand, yes. right? But I guess that's the nature Yeah, because no, you would go to like cities yeah. to like yeah. go to LA and like yeah. become the big, big Nick. Th Not anymore. Next big thing. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Right? It's it's places like this. So, 
Yeah, man. Well, it's been great having you uh, having you on the island, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to all the stuff that we do, man. So thanks, thanks for sitting down. Awesome, great.